I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal, the most vicious, and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never right. been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just from. Hello guys, this is Boxing Library and welcome back to part 2 of my um, breakdown of one of my top 10 ATGs um, that is the old mongoose, Archie Moore over 180 wins, over 130 KOs, um, beat multiple Hall of Famers, had a tough career um, we left off yesterday um, in December 1952 um, Ezard Charles had just beaten um, second rated light heavyweight in world Joey Maxim um, to finally, after many many years, you know, from, t from turning pro in the um, younger days um, you know, the mid 1930s um, it isn't until 1952 um, 17 years um, when he gets his shot at world title just think about that that'd be like Floyd Mayweather turning pro um, you know in, in when he did and not getting a title shot um, until 2012 2013 I mean it's <laughs> crazy business really so um, Archie Moore beats Joey Maxim becomes um, light heavyweight champion um, after that he fights streaming with less than stellar records Toxio Leonard Duggan Sonny Andrews um, before four months later in March 1953 um, he goes in with actually top three rated heavyweight Nino Valdez um, a very big punching heavyweight of the time um, Archie Moore beats Nino Valdez um, and there's one very interesting thing about Archie Moore's career even in his heavyweight forays um, as we go through you'll notice he's still after heavyweight forays comes back and he still maintains his light heavyweight title now after beating Nino Valdez top three rated heavyweight um, he beats the less than stellar um, record fighters Frank Buford Al Spalding um, and then he gives a rematch okay he gives a rematch in June 1953 um, to the man he um, um, won the title against Joey Maxim who's still top three rated at light heavyweight um, Archie Moore repeats the feat um, and beats Joey Maxim again on points to make the first defence of his light heavyweight title um, now after that he fights relative newcomer Rinaldo Ancelone um, and then he fights uh, um, Dogomar Martinez who's unbeaten in 25 fights Argentinian fighter um, and then he goes in for Joey Maxim fight three okay so he wins the title from Joey Maxim his first two defenses are against Joey Maxim now this is another year later so over all three of these years when he's fought Joey Maxim 52 1953 and 1954 Joey Maxim has been and maintained his top three light heavyweight ranking okay he's been top three ranked at light heavyweight all three times now after beating Joey Maxim a third time and making a second defense against Joey Maxim um, fight after that he fights Bob Baker okay scores a stoppage win over Bob Baker um, who is Bob Baker he's a top 10 rated heavyweight okay with a decent record um, after that he um, stops Burt Whitehurst and then he goes in to make his third defense of his light heavyweight title at Chimon. this defense is against um, another champion and Hall of Famer and a, a really good light heavyweight um, Harold Johnson um, Archie Moore wins by stoppage this is in August 1954 it's at Madison Square Garden um, Archie Moore makes the third defense of his light heavyweight title so his first three light heavyweight title fights um, you know all against top three rated each fight um, Joey Maxim then he goes in with Harold Johnson he's top five rated at light heavyweight um, to make his successful third defense now after fighting Harold Johnson okay in 1955 um, he goes back in okay with Nino Valdez who's top 10 rated at heavy now interestingly okay um, Marciano did not fight Nino Valdez um, but as we saw on um, after um, after he'd bet Joey Maxim sorry to win the title he actually beat Nino Valdez who were top 3 rated heavyweight now he goes back in with Nino Valdez again this is in May 1955 and this is a final eliminator okay for a shot at Rocky Marciano now Nino Valdez is still top 10 rated at heavy Archie Moore beats him um, in Las Vegas and ultimately that wins him a shot um, against Rocky Marciano it's a final eliminator so after beating Nino Valdez in May he decides to cram um, another light heavyweight title defense against um, Bobo Olsen Carl Bobo Olsen um, you know now he um, was a world middleweight champion um, of course he was the man who Ray Robinson came back after his hiatus and won the world middleweight title for a third time against um, you know ultimately Carl Bobo Olsen were top three rated at middleweight he's a champion all 
of Famer. Archie Moore makes his fourth title defence. Uh, Carol Bobo Olsen, um, you know, is another Hall of Famer on Archie Moore's ledger. And Archie Moore's record in title fights is now 5 0 with two KOs, and he's made four defences. So basically, 1955, uh, ending towards end of 1954, August 1955, he beat Al Johnson in the title fight. Going to 1955, he beats top 10 rated heavyweight Nino Valdez in a final eliminator. Defends his title against top 3 rated middleweight Cowboy Bolson to make a fourth light heavyweight title defence. And then the fight straight after that, of course, September 1955, he goes in with the unbeaten Brockton Blockbuster Rocky Marciano. Um, you know, ultimately, this is a, this is Archie Moore's first title fight loss, okay? Um, he's only won the title three, <laughs> three years ago, uh, just over, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's, he's already had five title fights um, at light heavyweight. This is his first heavyweight title fight. Um, Archie Moore, of course, loses after after famously dropping um, Rocky. Now, after that, he has a whole succession, succession of fights against people like um, Howard King and Frankie Daniels. He fights Howard King a second time. You know, no rated opponents. June 1956, though, is his next light heavyweight title fight for Archie Moore, and he goes in against another top 10 rated light heavyweight, Yolandi Pompey, okay, who's got a very good record. Um, you know, Archie Moore wins that fight, okay, inside the distance. Um, that is Archie Moore's fifth title defence um, since he won the title from Joey Maxim um, and again it's another fight against a top 10 rated fighter in a title defence now after two fights against um, a more relatively less known opposition um, in November 1956 Archie Moore again tries um, to win the heavyweight title okay now this is against the new kid on the block um, Floyd Patterson um, of course um, the, who is the number one heavyweight in the world um, in 1956 Archie Moore again loses by um, stoppage KO inside the distance so he sec for a second time fails to win the heavyweight title um, but interestingly like I said you know interestingly you know he, he defended his light heavyweight title then went in with Rocky Marciano um, after after losing to Marciano he defended his light heavyweight title against Yolandi Pompey then fought for the light uh, heavyweight title again against Floyd Patterson okay then after two fights okay um, in September 1957 um, this is he then defends his light heavyweight title again and this is against top five rated light heavyweight Tony Anthony again who had a good record um, this is Archie Moore's ninth world title fight his title fight record is now seven wins two losses four KOs and six defences and the only two losses are actually um, his two attempts to win a heavyweight title so Archie Moore even though he won the light heavyweight title he's started defending it he's had those two forays um, you know to heavyweight where he's failed against Marciano and Patterson two heavyweight Hall of Famers um, you know ultimately even before and after he still keeps maintaining his light heavyweight title um, now after beating Tony Anthony by knockout um, he then fights a whole succession of fights against not great opposition he fights people like uh, Burt Whitehurst Bob Albright Willie Besmanov not great fighters Howard King some decent fighters you know Charlie Norcus um, blah 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 now his next um, title fight um, is in December okay December 1958 and this is against Yvonne Jurel Yvonne Jurel, sorry I mouth stuttered there, uh, Yvonne Jurel, top 5 rated light heavyweight, okay, this is Archie Moore's 10th world title fight, Archie Moore knocks out Yvonne Jurel, um, you know, in a mega fight, um, ultimately, <laughs> um, to make his 7th title defence, um, you know, Archie Moore's dropped a whole host in that fight, um, but comes back and shows his, his grit and steel, comes back and um, knocks out Yvonne Jurel in the later rounds, now, after fighting um, debutant Sterling Davis, he then goes back in 5 months later, in 1959 um, with Yvonne Jarrell for the rematch um, you know Archie Moore again scores an inside the distance win um, and thus makes an 8th successful title defence now after that he fights Willie Besmanov um, he fights George Abinet who had a losing record and then he goes in with top 10 rated light heavyweight um, Julio Rinaldi now this is a non-title fight ok this fight takes, pa takes place in um, um, Lazio um, Italy ok now Archie Moore loses this fight on points okay um, now this is an interesting one he loses to Giulio Rinaldi okay in um, October 1960 then um, towards the end of 1960 he beats Buddy Terman um, and again in the start of 1961 he beats Buddy Terman and then decides in June 1961 to defend his light heavyweight title um, against the man who had beaten him in the non-title fight Ju uh, Giulio Rinaldi okay now Giulio Rinaldi um, was top 10 rated um, previously he's now top 
top three rated light heavyweight, um, but Archie Moore avenges that defeat and wins on points. Now, this is 1961, okay? Archie Moore won the title in 1952 and he had to wait all those years, nearly, what is it, 16, 17 years or something to get his shot at a title. Um, and now he's already kept it, you know, what is approaching, you know, 9, 10 years. Now, after that, he fights Pete um, Rademacher and beats Pete Rademacher. He also fights Alejandro Lavarenti um, and again fights Howard King. Um, now, another major fight of the time, okay, is against um, Willie Pastrano, okay, um, world champion Willie Pastrano. Um, he's top 10 rated a light everywhere. This is in 1962. Archie Moore's been a professional approaching um, 30 years, you know, just shy of 30 years he's been a professional. He had to wait like 17, 8, I think it's 17. 18 years I ain't got the exact date but a hell of a long time you know um, before getting a shot um, you know <laughs> but Julio Rinaldi um, in June 1961 that is his last successful title defence um, in a time after that um, you know the light heavyweight title um, is taken away now, um, after fighting Willie Pastrano and getting a draw, so even at a hugely advanced age, um, he's still fighting and been defending his title against Yvonne Jurels and Julio Rinaldi's and fighting Parsons and Marcianos and uh, Joey Maxims, blah, blah, blah. He's now really old. Um, his last major fight, of course, is against his third heavyweight champion and Hall of Famer he fights in his career, um, and that is the great Muhammad Ali, um, you know, who at that time is top three rated heavyweight and, of course, a three-time heavyweight champion. Um, and Archimor ends up with Mike DiBias um, in his last fight who was a debutant but Archimor's so old by this point um, you know <laughs> but he does win he does win his last fight interestingly and interestingly enough um, hang on a minute what, how many is here yeah, the 16, in his last 16 fights, he actually only loses two. Uh, he loses two and draws two. So even in his last 16 fights, he wins more than he loses, uh, even though he's really old, uh, which says a lot about him. <laughs> you know, he's really old. He's had to wait from, like, 1935 to 1952 to get his title shot. Um, he holds linear light heavyweight title virtually a decade and, and makes all those defences. And even then, he has those forays into heavyweight fighting Marciano Patterson and um, Ali. Um, he fails to beat them, but at that advanced age and after all them wars, I'm not surprised them young uh, young gunners um, beat him. Now, just interestingly, um, if we look at Archimar's title fight record, um, you know, he beat Joey Maxim. He made two defences against Joey Maxim. Um, he then beat Harold Johnson in his third defence. He then made a fourth defence against Kyle Bobo Olsen. He then went to heavyweight and lost to Marciano, of course, in a challenge for heavyweight title. Um, he then made a defense against Yolande Pompey, then went again for heavyweight title against Floyd Parson this time. Um, then he made defense against Tony Anthony, Yvonne Jarrell, um, on two occasions, and Julio Rinaldi. Okay, um, so ultimately, Archie Moore had, a, had you know, over 10 world title fights. Um, in his 12 world title fights, seven of those um, fights were against men who were titles, seven of those fights were against men who were Hall of Famers, and 11 of those 12 fights were against top 10 rated opponents so his title reign is very consistent lots of champions lots of now hall of famers and virtually every single one um, a top 10 rated fighter now he did fight just over 120 title fight rounds in his career he didn't have a huge um, title fight CV because he had to wait so long you know if Archie Moore you know turning pro in 1935 if he'd have got a title shot in 1945 and not 1952 I mean god knows how many title fights this guy would have had I mean he averaged one or two fights a year but even then that would have took him to 20 25 world title fights he could have crammed in now that's all speculation he didn't do that you know and I don't go on speculation on what people didn't do but it is worth mentioning because Archie Moore's title fight record also has to be matched by the fact that he had to wait 17 to 18 years um, and then he still held the linear light heavyweight title nearly a decade, you know, so he did very well in uh, title fights considering he had to wait all that time. Like I said, that'd be like Floyd turning pro and having to wait while 2013 to get a title shot. That is the equivalent length of time what Archie Moore had to wait. Now, Archie Moore in fights against champions, um, he had 20 fights against champions um, and fought just over 200 rounds against champions in his career. Um, you know, he beat people like Holman Williams, Harold Johnson, Joey Maxim, 
Carl Bobo Olsen. By my count, he's about six world champions in his career. Um, part of that reason for the low number of champions is because a lot of Black Murderers Row fighters who were many at best fighters of that era, many of them, he thought, were never given title shots anyway. Um, only people like Burley, Holman, Williams, etc. held versions of the coloured titles of the time. Now, Hall of Fame fights, when we look at Hall of Fame fights, Archie Moore has 27 fights against Hall of Fame fighters, okay, he's got 16 wins, 11 losses, so even there from his just over 20 defeats, 11 of those defeats came from Hall of Famers, but I'm going to break the defeats down later, um, Archie Moore fought pretty much 270 rounds um, in his career against Hall of Famers, and the Hall of Famers he beat individually um, were people like Lloyd Marshall, Coco Kid, Holman Williams, Jimmy Bivins, Harold Johnson, Joey Maxim, and Carl Bobo Olsen, um, you know, interestingly, if more murderers row members are added later, his Hall of Fame tally will go up but Archie Moore beat seven individual Hall of Famers um, so that's a good Hall of Hall of Famers there now when we go on to the ring rankings of Archie Moore okay I'm, I'm going to go through the ring rankings then we're going to you know um, just recap on his fights against Black Murderers Row members now I include Jimmy Bivins in that um, that's my personal choice um, many other people don't consider him in that but I do um, but ultimately we're going to look at the Black Murderers Row fights because he's got an excellent record against the Black Murderers Row members and, and that is to me a good standpoint because because them fighters are considered many at best fighters of that era, okay, um, and some of the toughest fighters of that era. Um, so in judging Archimor's CV, I think that is also a very noteworthy thing. Now, interestingly, okay, Archimor, ring-ranked opponents, um, a la Tony Canzaneri. Uh, Tony Canzaneri and Archimor virtually identical. Archimor had over 50 fights over 50 fights against top 10 ring ranked opponents um, you know with a record of 33 wins 14 losses 5 draws and a lot of those defeats to ring ranked opponents were to the champions or hall of famers or black murderers row members he fought um, so he has masses of fights against top 10 ring rated opponents I mean, to put it another way, you know, he has more fights against top ten, top ten ring ranked opponents than many fighters in modern era have fights in their career you know, and fighters in modern era fight the weaker opposition initially and then build up as they go. But Archie Moore has, has fought more top 10 ring ranked opponents than, you know, most modern fighters have had fights. Um, obviously, with some exceptions like Vlad Biop and um, Pacquiao, etc. But very few fighters now are going past 52, 52 fights, except more than major fighters um, who have longer careers. So, ring ranked opponents Archie Moore beat. He beat Jack Chase, top 10 middle. He beat Nate Bolden, top 10 light heavy. Now, this will also be a, a little demonstration of Archie Moore, you know, how he did fight a lot of light heavyweights, but, you know, he also went from middleweight to heavyweight in his career and fought over those divisions. And as you know, from, um, in fact, that's another thing I'll recap, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, in fact, we can do it here. Now, he beat Jack Chase, top 10 rated middle. Um, you know, he beat Nate Bolden, top 10 rated light heavy. He twice beat top top um, top 10 rated light heavyweight Black Murderers Row member Lloyd Marshall he beat top 3 rated middleweight Black Murderers Row member Holman Williams he beat top 10 rated light heavyweight Curtis Shepard he beat top 3 rated middleweight Black Murderers Row member Bert Littell um, and then he beat um, Charlie Dot Williams um, Oakland Billy Smith who were both top 10 rated light heavyweights um, he also beat Jimmy Bivins um, top 10 rated light heavyweight don't forget guys these are just his wins over top 10 ring ranked opponents um, he also beat Oakland Billy Smith again when he were top 10 ranked Jimmy Bivins again when they were top 10 ranked he beat Harold Johnson who were top 5 ranked these are all at light heavyweight at the moment except for the Jimmy Bivins fight um, when he was rated at heavyweight he also beat um, Leonard Moreau um, and Harold Johnson twice um, all, all three of those fights they were top top 5 rated at light heavyweight he then beat Jimmy Slade who were top 10 rated light heavyweight and then he beat um, two top 10 rated heavyweights Bob Dunlap and Clarence Henry um, in this time he beat two top 10 rated heavyweights there then he beat Joey Maxim who were a top 3 rated um, light heavyweight he beat Nino Valdez who were a top 3 rated heavyweight so as you can see he's foreign about middleweight light heavyweight heavyweight um, after that he twice beats Joey Maxim who's you know on both occasions top 3 rated at light heavyweight he then beats Bob Baker who's top 5 rated at heavyweight he then beats Harold Johnson you know champion Hall of Famer top 5 rated at light heavyweight he then beats top 10 rated heavyweight Nino Valdez um, then beats beats top three rated middleweight Carl Bobo Olsen another champion Hall of Famer um, you know then he beats um, Yolande Pompey top ten rated light heavy, heavy Tony Anthony um, top five light heavy Yvonne Durrell um, you know top five rated light heavy and Julio Rinaldi top three rated light heavy I mean just reading through that list 
You know, and even on that list of ring-ranked opponents, he's got Jack Chase, Black Murderers Row member, Marshall Twice, Black Murderers Row member, Holman Williams, Black Murderers Row member, Bert Littell, Black Murderers Row member, Jimmy Bivins, Black Murderers Row member, Jimmy Bivins, Black Murderers Row member, Harold Johnson, champion Hall of Famer, um, light heavyweight great, Harold uh, Harold Johnson two more times, um, Joey Maxim, champion Hall of Famer, um, you know, Joey Maxim twice, champion Hall of Famer, Harold Johnson, champion Hall of Famer, Carl Bobo Olsen, champion Hall of Famer. So it's not only that he's won a lot of fights against top 10 ring ranked opponents but what you find with Archie Moore he's actually won a lot of fights against champions hall of famers or black murderers row members when they were top 10 ranked now I think that makes their wins a lot more significant because unlike when Ray Robinson fought his black murderers row member you know he was not top 10 ranked it was right at the end of his career after he'd had a a, a, a break okay and he came back and fought Robinson but you know here he's beating a lot of these um, fighters when they are top 10 ranked so he's not beating them when they're way past it he's beating them when the current contenders which to me gives them wins even more significance so going from the top 10 ring ranked opponents now the Black Murderers Row are quite rightly um, venerated as some of the toughest and some of the best and most skilled fighters um, of not only their era, but as a collection, you know, just an incredible bunch of fighters. So, you know, you may be asking yourself, I've, I've mentioned through the video, um, part one and part two, who Archie Moore fought, um, you know, when he was fighting the Black Murderers Row members. Now, let's do a recap. This is um, quite an incredible record, um, considering that many, most of these fights are against these guys when they were top 10 ranked. Now, now, um, his first Black Murderers Row fight, Eddie Booker, a draw. Uh, fight two, Jack Chase, a win. Fight three, Eddie Booker, a draw. Fight four, Jack Chase, a win. Fight five, Jack Chase, a loss. He loses to Ed and Little Tiger Wade. Uh, fight seven, Jack Chase, he wins. Then he loses fight eight and nine to Eddie Booker and Charlie Burley. Fight 10 and 11, he wins against Dangerous Lloyd Marshall. Fight number 12, he loses to Jimmy Bivins. Fight number 13, he beats Coco Kid. Fight number 14 and 15, he, he loses to the great Holman Williams, then comes back and beat Holman Williams. Fight 16 and 17, he draws and then wins against Jack Chase. Fight number 18, he beats Bert Littell. Fight 19, 20 and 21, he wins all three fights against Jimmy Bivins. Fight 22, he goes back in with Bert Littell again. And fight 23, he beats Jimmy Bivins. Now, I always throw Jimmy Bivins in Black Murderers Row members. Like I've said, if other people don't, that's cool. But I think he deserves to be included. And I've always included him. Um, but just in that list there, I've took you through 20, 23 fights against Black Murderers Row members. Now, Archie Moore's record against the fighters who are members of Black Murderers Row. And a lot of people say, as a child should go in. Okay, so, you know, that push it to 20. Six, um, but you know, I really generally don't include Ezard Charles because he got a shot of that heavyweight title. You know, he did he did fight some of the top fighters, many more so than these guys. I mean, Coco Kid, you know, he was supposed to fight um, um, who was it, Marcel Sedan. Um, and at one point, um, you know, he, w he was going to fight Lamar. You know, when you look at um, Charlie Burley, you know, he was being named by NBA uh, as top challenger for um, Henry Armstrong at welterweight. And there was later much want of a fight between him and Sugar Ray Robinson. Um, so that's really why I don't include Ezra Charles in there. But if anyone includes Ezra Charles in there, I agree with you. Me personally, I don't. But I agree if people put Ezra Charles in because he also was avoided by many fighters. But from the 23 fights against um, my black murderers row uh, members okay he has won 14 lost six and drawn three okay so he's fought many of the toughest or most skilled fighters of his era in the black murderers row and from 23 fights against them he's only lost six and as i showed on the ring ratings many of those guys were in their prime which is another remarkable aspect of archie Moore's incredible career now one of the things about archie Moore, again i want to get onto he had you know, depending on which source you believe, 23 or 24 defeats. Now, another thing I want to highlight is who many of these defeats were to, okay? So, three of those defeats he suffered. Uh, one was to top 10 light heavyweight Julio Rinaldi. Another was to top three light heavyweight Leonard Moreau, okay? Um, and another was to another top 10 light heavyweight. So, there's three top 10 light heavyweights he suffered losses to out of his 23 or 24 losses depending on which source you go on okay now let's add the other defeats in teddy Yaroz, um champion hall of famer um jack chase black murderers row Aaron wade black murderers row eddie booker black murderers row these are only defeats charlie burley black murderers row jimmy bivins black murderers row homer williams black murderers row um then he loses to three uh, three fights to champion hall of fame
him great Ezar Charles um, then he has a loss to Harold Johnson then he loses to Marciano then Patterson then Ali so whichever saw she used the 24 defeats or 23 defeats 17 okay well 14 of his of those defeats are to Black Murderers Row members or Hall of Famers now that is incredible 14 of those defeats are just to Black Murderers Row members or Hall of Famers who were also champions now when you add the three top 10 rated light heavyweights in so say if you go use the source of Archimor 23 defeats and one defeat between them don't really you know it's not much different it needs nailing down but you know I'm not going to haggle over it you know but ultimately that means that 17 of Archimor's 23 defeats have either been against top 10 ring rated opponents three those and like say the other 14 against Black Murderers Row members champs are all of famous who most of whom were in their primes so even there he's only suffered six or seven defeats you know and considering how long he fought and considering that some of those defeats came earlier in his career you know it is just remarkable what Archie Moore has done you know when I sum up Archie Moore, um, Archie Moore and his career what we have here um, is a super CV we have a fighter who had to wait an astonishingly large amount of time to get his title shot between 17 and 18 years and even then you know, he turned pro in the mid thirties. He did. He didn't fight Maxim for the title until fifty-two. He then holds the light heavyweight title for a decade. Um, and even though, like I explained, he's foreign up to heavyweight division on a few occasions, challenged for heavyweight title. Even when he fails there, he keeps coming back and defending his light heavyweight title. You know, Archie Moore is to me um, a top ten all-time great not just a light heavyweight great i put archie Moore number one at light heavyweight um and i put him top 10 all time um now if people want to put Ezard charles top number one light heavyweight i'm not really going to argue at all um but me personally i put archie Moore number one and i have archie Moore top 10 all time i have him at number six as my you know in what will be my top 100 of all time Archie Moore takes number six and that is because his incredibly large record um, and even though he waited 17 18 years for his shot when he got it he didn't waste it he was lineal champ 10 years he made all those defenses he fought all those black murderers row fighters over and over again when they were avoided by many of best fighters of his era and he built a 200 plus fight career with over 180 wins over 130 KOs he beat seven all of fame as he had over 50 fights against top 10 ring rated opponents this is just one of the greatest fighters of all time simple as anyway guys i'm the boxing librarian i'm out for now